The following presentation was recorded at the 2013 Southeast Linux Fest in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following Diamond sponsors in 2013 for helping make these videos possible. Aid and maintain uh, those courses, refreshing the material for new features and functionality in Asterix as well as just uh, general changes in major Asterix versions and uh, also um, creating online material and uh, that's, so that's what I'm not doing when, or what I'm doing when I'm not uh, providing those courses and uh, speaking at events and trade shows etc like this. Um, real quick uh, I guess since we have a small group here I just kind of wanted to get a feel for um, what if any uh, Asterisk experience we have so, um, has anyone never really even heard of Asterisk? Okay. Uh, anyone using Asterisk? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, um, our company's using it, but I, I did not set it up. Okay, okay. So, it's just up and running and running just your internal phones and stuff? No, well, we're an ISP. We provide phone service to end users. Okay. Uh, do, do you know um, how much of the functionality you're providing is based on Asterisk? Like, it's just voicemail or, uh, it, it, you know? It's, it's all Asterisk. Oh, it's all asterisk space. Okay, great. I like to hear that. Um, I think we have uh, two or three hundred customers. What's this signal says? Remember to repeat questions so that it gets on your mic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, it's okay. okay. Uh, this is just sort of preamble because you haven't officially started. No, not really. Just kind of doing. So it's ready to go when you are. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, I guess I should introduce the talk then if we're going to have that on video. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I kind of I did kind of do that already. All right, so well, I've officially titled this uh, Asterisk Introduction: An Introduction to Asterisk. So to be clear, what we're going to be doing is introducing Asterisk, and uh, <laughs> to be really specific, what I'm talking about is just kind of a a general um, uh, well intro to. Not just Asterix as it is the uh, the project and software solution, uh, but also the community in different ways that you can uh, hopefully um, find online support and help, et cetera. So, um, like I was introducing myself earlier, uh, and uh, speaking of getting help and uh, engaging with the community, I wanted to briefly introduce uh, Rusty Newton as well. He is the uh, what, community support manager at Digium. Uh, been doing that for, I guess, about a year now, huh? a little over a year. And but uh, well, let's see. You've been with Digium about seven years as well, and uh, kind of has the same background as me. Uh, started off in uh, the mean streets of technical support, and worked our way up various roles. Uh, both of us did a tiny bit in, in uh, the sales department as well. Um, what was your uh, official role? Uh, account executive. Okay, okay, for specifically asterisk related stuff, I think, yeah. So, yeah. Repeat. Oh, not repeat what he was saying. See, I'm sorry, because it's, it's not a question. I was like, so, uh, yeah, um, Rusty not, was an a inside account executive for um, uh, asterisk related sales. So, uh, he's done a lot related to asterisk, and I guess uh, in his role as a community support manager, he engages with uh, people who are um, uh, purely on the open source side of the community, so uh, not a commercial role, but helping people out who have issues on the, the, the bug tracker. He's always on the, the bug tracker maintaining that, and uh, as well as the IRC channel kind of uh, uh, marshalling those things. Um, anything else I should add to that? No, that's really it. Also stuff like this, so uh, we're, st we're, st we're starting to, uh, to try and um, reinvigorate and, and uh, put focus on just engaging the community in general. So uh, both of our roles kind of overlap in that regard. So that's what we're here to do. And so hopefully kind of uh, um, get some new asterisk people into the fold. So yeah, w welcome. Uh, we were just kind of introducing ourselves and kind of getting an idea of, uh, uh, for those of us who, who are here, um, uh, if there's any asterisk experience or if, if anyone's just completely new to asterisk or uh, who hasn't heard of asterisk. Um, so uh, anyone not know what a PBX is? Okay, so we're, we're on the same page there. Um, 
So what is asterisk? The, 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 the common answer, what people often refer to it as, and uh, used to be how we would define it ourselves at Digium, is uh, an open source PBX. Um, as asterisk has grown and, and features have been added over the years, uh, it's kind of expanded to be more than, than, than just a, a PBX. Uh, a PBX, a, a uh, officially a private branch exchange, uh, is, a, is a local, a premise-based uh, phone switch, really. And so traditionally what that would allow you to do is uh, interconnect uh, your internal resources, you know, uh, traditionally just, you know, analog phone lines uh, to the desk sets and uh, bridge those to external trunk connections, maybe channelized T1 or ISDN circuits, or just a, a bunch of analog lines coming in. But those would typically be asymmetrical. You know, if you're using analog, you might have four main lines and dozens of phones internally. And of course, the other important thing is that it allows for uh, call routing, you know, old school uh, dialing nine to get out, and uh, also features such as voicemail, dial by name directory, uh, conferencing, and, uh, and in-call features, you know, being able to, to dial star eight to perhaps enable recording or, uh, you know, park a call, uh, features like that. But uh, we, we like to refer to it as a, uh, a communications platform or a, uh, uh, you know, a telephony toolkit uh, because it does so much more than that now. There's, uh, first of all, uh, a number of um, different languages or, or uh, technologies and protocols that Asterix uh, will, will interconnect with. So um, on just the, the infrastructure uh, level, we um, have traditional te telephony interconnect with uh, analog, T1, E1, J1, um, protocols like MFC R2, uh, the backbone protocol for the, the uh, uh, PSTN, which is uh, SS7, and also uh, on the feature side, a lot more than just those traditional PBX capabilities. So uh, calendaring integration, by, by which I mean specifically, if um, you have call routing rules in your PBX, uh, end users can have the ability, or you can as an administrator, uh, statically configure for them uh, basic time-based rules. Okay, that would, that's somewhat traditional. So out of business hours, you know, after five o'clock, calls might go directly to uh, voicemail, you know. But beyond that, you can integrate with, with the, their, their calendar so that uh, if they have themselves out of the office because they're going to, to self, then it will also automatically, um, you know, send calls to voicemail, whatever rules you want to configure um, to that end. Uh, integration with email, some of that is very basic, such as uh, uh, voicemail to email, so uh, you can, optionally get notifications that a voicemail has been received and the body of the email will describe, you know, the, the caller ID, uh, the, t the time of the call, uh, the duration of the call or the, the message specifically, and also uh, optionally uh, attach the, the voicemail as a sound file so they can just natively play it uh, from their, uh, their client. And integration with instant messaging, uh, XMPP, et cetera. So, that's just a, 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 a brief overview. Um, there are a number of granular capabilities that Asterix provides that don't fall into uh, generic um, uh, application style uh, capabilities. So for example, voicemail is something that's uh, a particular module of Asterix that covers that capability. And it's uh, loaded uh, into the, the asterisk dial plan, as it's referred to. That's, that's where all of uh, the, the call routing and feature capability is loaded into memory at runtime. And it's configured typically through uh, the, the asterisk extension uh, scripting language, which is very basic uh, configuration method for uh, that call routing and capability. So um, I'll talk briefly about the syntax in a second, but uh, uh, this slide here is really to show um, how Asterix is a, uh, just a communication server and not natively out of the box any particular thing. It's not uh, a turnkey PBX that you, you drop in and uh, have the basic functionality where phones know where each other are. You really do have to configure it. So uh, it's analogous to setting up Apache and you might have uh, from a package manager installed that and have the, the basic uh, uh, start page, you know, confirming you've installed it, but it doesn't actually do anything. You have to actually 
you know, create your own content. So in the example of the, the hello world here, um, this extension, an extension being a, a name or a number that you address, like you actually dial, okay? So just to be clear, a lot of uh, users will uh, mix the nomenclature a little bit, uh, referring to an extension as the endpoint, you know, the, the phone. And that's not, you know, pedantically, that's, that's not really the case. So anyways, the, the, um, what I wanted to point out while we're looking at this is um, in the extension uh, language, it's uh, you synchronously load what are called applications. And applications provide um, uh, an actual effect on the channel. So think of basic things like uh, bridging calls. The, the dial application does that. Playback to uh, invoke a, a sound file and just play it to the channel. Okay. So that's what's happening here is we're, we're uh, explicitly answering the line, which is actually redundant. But, but for the sake of example, it's, it's fine. Uh, the playback application will actually automatically uh, answer. And uh, you may note that the, the file, uh, hello world, um, in the parenthesis here, does not have a file extension. That's actually normal for, for asterisk uh, because it, it's um, going to be a hybrid mixing m multiple channels of different technologies, different protocols, and also different uh, audio codecs. It will transcode from channel A to channel B. And so uh, it'll also uh, pick the least cost to transcode. So if there are multiple files of the same name, one is you know, uh, GSM encoded and one is, uh, you know, G711, then it'll, it'll pick which one is easier for asterisk, uh, you know, less impact on the CPU. So um, getting back to my original point as far as the, the, the functionality that asterisk provides, it's, it's very dynamic um, with respect to the, the extension language that you can configure um, various functionality like, uh, does anyone know what IVR is? Or use that, you know, uh, auto attendant, the, okay, so when you call into a, 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 you know, commercial phone system, you always get that automatic response and that basic behavior of prompt and then response via DTMF or um, the obnoxious uh, voice response, which you can do with asterisks, by the way. Fun to configure, not always fun to interact with as a, as a user, right? Um, so functionality such as voicemail is, is, a, is a relatively basic setup where you invoke an application directly from the link. You say, you could, after the playback, I could have another line that instead of saying hang up, which would end the call right away, I could call the application voicemail. And then the caller, whoever dialed 100, will be prompted for the user's mailbox number, and then they'll uh, be able to leave a voicemail. And of course, that's all very configurable. But uh, things like auto attendant are, uh, very dynamic and something you configure by leveraging a number of different applications uh, to create that. So you would, you know, call a playback, uh, for example, and then other applications that listen for DTMF or voice input. So it's entirely up to you. The, these applications are synchronously loaded and then executed, you know, in series. We'll look at uh, the extension language in a little bit more detail, the syntax and how to create uh, basic dial plan or call routing. Um, but some some history of Asterix as well as Digium. Uh, the Asterix project uh, really began in 1999 um, with uh, the first uh, release, uh, point 0.1, which I think went up to, to point 0.9, and then there was the Asterix uh, 1.0 release in 2004. Uh, the, the general development cycle is a yearly release of a major version. Started with 1.x uh, at Asterix 10, as you may note. We, we dropped the superfluous 1.0. And uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. One of, it, one of the reasons was really kind of a marketing thing uh, because of the sort of evolutionary development process and the fact that being an open source community, there, there wasn't any uh, easy way to start from scratch. And, and uh, some people wanted to develop, you know, 2.0 Asterix, a ground up rewrite. But that was never really going to happen. So as Asterix evolutionary, uh, you know, changes took place, you know, looking back from asterisk 10 to asterisk 1, 2, it was, you know, so wildly different. They decided to, to drop the one, and, and that would be a push uh, to kind of unify the community as well, get everyone to update and get off these, these old, uh, almost incompatible versions and start using asterisk 10. Uh, we currently uh, are, um, the, the current release of asterisk is, is uh, asterisk 11, and uh, I guess 
we, at least there'll be a beta release for Asterix 12 in October, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, uh, the, the cycle is, is pretty closely tied to a uh, convention that we have yearly called Astrocon. Um, uh, the, the Asterix convention uh, takes place in late October and is a similar uh, show to this one. It's very technical in a, uh, we have a small trade show floor as well as various tracks of talks for a couple of days and a party, and it's, a, it's really an awesome way to interact with the, the Asterix community and user base. And, uh, but there's also a DEF CON, like a big round table every year, and so they'll, that'll kind of guide the, the desired feature set for the next major release of Asterisk, and then, you know, the you know, quarter of the year before the, the show, they'll kind of have a feature freeze and lock down what they're, they're um, gonna extensively test and, and clean up to have a stable release, uh, and so um, Asterix 12 is pretty exciting. There are a number of um, uh, architectural changes that are, are definitely a good thing. Um, so I know that Asterix experience may be min minimal here, and that's what we're here for, to get everyone kind of uh, introduced, to get their feet wet. Uh, is anyone familiar with uh, the SIP protocol, or use that in any other architecture, or you know, Cisco, or Microsoft, God forbid? Um, hey, hey, hey. Okay, well, we're gonna have to talk later. He said Microsoft Link is pretty good, just for the record, so. <laughs> um, so yeah, wow. Um, the, uh, the, the, the history, again, the, the major version release here, uh, I wanted to point out, um, you can see that uh, there was, uh, one six sort of a, had a different uh, numbering scheme. One six O, one and two are major releases, uh, therefore, uh, releases of different features and was just done in a, in a smaller cycle and uh, so the the, the long-term support versions like 1.8 that's an LTS release so that has a extended uh, life cycle uh, support from the community for X amount of years for um, uh, bug fixes and then uh, even longer for uh, security fixes before that uh, that branch is officially end of life and uh, but, but getting back to, to Asterix 12, uh, and for those who, who use SIP, and to give you an example, SIP you know, being such a ubiquitous VoIP protocol, uh, it's definitely uh, one of the, the most often used uh, channel types uh, uh, interconnect for, for Asterisk. And uh, one of the things changing in, in Asterix 12 is a complete rewrite uh, of the, the, uh, a new channel driver for, for SIP. They'll be maintaining the, the, the current SIP channel driver for some time, um, I don't think, do, do they even have any anticipated end of life for that, or? Probably the, not. <laughs> yeah, they probably won't, may, may not be deprecated for some time, yeah. So, um, no worries there, but that, that's the kind of low-level stuff that's changing in Asterix 12, and it's, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. Um, so, a little bit about Asterix today, about the, the community and implementations of Asterisk. There are uh, Millions of, of Asterisk servers in production. It's difficult to quantify for hopefully obvious reasons. We can track how many uh, people download Asterisk directly from Asterisk.org, but people downloading it through various packages like uh, perhaps you've seen PBX in a flash or the, the free PBX distro, um, it's Elastics, et cetera, as well as just through package managers, uh, not from the, the vanilla uh, Asterisk host, uh, Asterisk.org uh, repo. Uh, so there are uh, definitely uh, a, a number of installations, big and small. So the, the, the types of installations of Asterisk aren't just based in like Soho PBX. Uh, we have installations that we're aware of that are thousands of users uh, um, that are agents in call centers, that kind of installation, as well as uh, large scale uh, campus installations at a number of universities and uh, also Asterix being used by ITSPs, uh, Internet Telephony Service Providers, and uh, as, as well as traditional telecom for, for various features. And so it, it does scale from, you know, like for example, I have a VPS that I have my personal Asterix box just for fun features like, uh, features like caller ID spoofing and caller ID uh, based uh, routing. So, you know, uh, if, if it's not someone who's a kind of whitelisted, then they won't be able to get, get through uh, to call my cell phone. And, uh, you know, scaling from, you know, Soho to SMB all the way to enterprise. Now, as far as the, the, the community itself goes, uh, I wanted to 
to mention to you uh, a couple of, of ways to engage the community, both uh, just for general interaction as well as uh, particularly for, for help, for support. So uh, those, those points are, uh, first of all, pound asterisk uh, on Freenode is the, the, the general IRC channel for asterisk. There's, there's also asterisk dash dev, which is not for you know, that kind of support, but for actual interaction uh, on development issues with, with asterisk. So if you are interested in asterisk and also willing to uh, contribute to the development of asterisk, that's, that's one place to do that, as well as uh, asterisk uh, um, bug tracker at issues.asterisk.org. And both of those places, again, are, are where our community support manager will be uh, always watching to, to help and, and, and shepherd the community there. Um, but that's, that's a good place to look if you have an issue with asterisks, if you, you know, you're Googling the, um, the error message that you're receiving, you'll also want to check the bug tracker and see if, there is, if you're on a current, current release of asterisk that uh, the, the issue you're experiencing is already uh, being addressed. And that way you can um, monitor the issue and there may already be a patch and uh, you know, like a revision uh, in asterisk uh, development currently uh, uses uh, Subversion as a revision control system. And so they, uh, they may already have a, a, a revision um, in uh, SVN that you can check out to uh, update your, your version of Asterix and resolve the issue. So that, that's a good place to, to check out. Uh, also, uh, the hosted forums, uh, forums.asterix.org, um, there is a uh, help or questions forum there. And then uh, another big uh, place uh, very active. The, the mailing lists, uh, asterisk dash users in particular, there are perhaps, I mean, dozens of, of lists that are very granular topics, you know, like asterisk video and asterisk um, internationalization concerns, etc. But asterisk users is, is very active in, in a, a lot of, of the experts as well as uh, the, the core developers of asterisk are there answering questions. Um, but the other mailing list I would highly recommend, if you're going to be using Asterix at all in production, for sure, uh, subscribe to Asterix Security. Um, that's going to be uh, where, when there's a uh, point release, you know, Asterix 182.1 because of a, a security concern that's been, been fixed, the, the announcement will go to, to that mailing list so you can download the, the fix for that particular problem. So that's definitely one to watch. Okay, uh, brief note about licensing for, for Asterisk. There are technically two licenses. Um, Asterisk is open source and released under the GPL, uh, version two specifically. And uh, this is the, the, the version of Asterisk that's far and away the most common, but the, because Asterisk uh, is um, created by Digium and the founder of, of Digium, Mark Spencer, uh, we hold the copyright and also have a closed source commercial uh, OEM specifically version of Asterix. So um, that comes with you know, various SLA agreements and is used by a number of parties in other applications and uh, uh, telcos, et cetera. So uh, the, the open source version is available for download. Of course, it, uh, uh, you can go to asterix.org slash downloads and that's just a, a main landing page where you can click to download the a um, couple of the current versions of Asterix 1.8 LTS version and uh, the bleeding edge version Asterix 11 and uh, various other related packages um, like uh, Asterix Now. And uh, Asterix Now is a, a version of Asterix that is um, a, an easy way to, to install Asterix and as well as maintain it. So it's, it's sort of, there, there are a number of packages uh, distros based on asterisk. And, uh, one of them, again, uh, is a PBX and a flash that uh, you know, bundles a, a, a great number of, of tools and uh, add-on software for asterisk and administration. Uh, asterisk now uh, takes a different approach. It's very vanilla. The, the, the distro, the, the bundle contains uh, CentOS as the, the underlying operating system and then uh, asterisk and the free PBX open source asterisk GUI. Uh, which is a great uh, tool. It has it uh, also very uh, uh, well? It's of course it's very overlapping community with the the, the general Asterix community, but they also have commercial for pay support and uh, the same kind of uh, traditional more open source support where you can 
uh, engage the community and the developers on IRC and a mailing list. So, um, <clears throat> the 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 other way you can download asterisks actually uh, while you're you're looking there is uh, you can add some uh, some asterisks.org uh, or Digium uh, created uh, repos for both Red Hat and uh, and Debian based systems. So you can add those repos to to your list so that you can always check out uh, the the vanilla you know, kind of canonical version of Asterisk, which if you are interested in using this in production and may need support, that'll be the version you want to use. It'll, you know, it's typically going to be the first thing anyone asks if, if you're looking for help is are you using the, the, the current stable version? So, um, <clears throat> uh, a couple of Asterisk use cases to give you some ideas of, of how Asterisk can fit in and how, uh, you know, malleable it is. As we were mentioning, it, it, it definitely can be in, started its life as a, as a PBX, so that can be uh, traditional functionality, traditional uh, uh, interconnect, PSTN connections, you know, T1, analog, et cetera. Uh, also VoIP, there's a number of, of uh, VoIP protocols, uh, all the protocols that you would expect Asterix can, can speak, including, uh, of course, SIP. The inter Asterix exchange protocol, which is in sort of an Asterix developed thing for connecting Asterix machines together, but it also has some great use for uh, endpoints because like uh, protocols like SIP can have issues with remotely connected endpoints. You know, if I'm trying to register my uh, SIP phone, my SIP client on, on Android to uh, Digium's uh, PBX, I might have trouble with that because of NAT traversal, but using Eeks, I uh, wouldn't have that problem. So uh, also H323, MGCP, uh, Skinny, uh, Cisco's SCCP protocol, and, and others like uh, Nortel, Unistim. Uh, so this uh, allows Asterix to, to um, be a perfect fit as a, as a VoIP gateway. You can use Asterix to just uh, uh, enhance a, a legacy PBX that, that unfortunately you may have to, to keep around for a long time. And it, it doesn't have VoIP capability, it's only got traditional uh, T1, for example, then you can use a T1 card hosted right in the PC or a T1 gateway, uh, a small appliance that uh, can take the T1 connection uh, in and then over Ethernet and a uh, VoIP protocol like SIP uh, connect to Asterisk. And so then uh, Asterisk itself can be a, a very feature rich uh, gateway and provide other services at the same time. So that's often kind of the path uh, that um, is taken wholesale replacing a system with asterisk, you know, uh, first at the edge, you know, replacing the, the legacy connection with a VoIP connection, and then uh, taking over the features like voicemail functionality, uh, conferencing, et cetera. And the benefit here hopefully is obvious. The, 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 the typical problem you're gonna experience with a, a, a legacy system is encumberment with, uh, you know, various licensing models and pricing so that, you know, if you want to add 50 more uh, seats for conferencing, for example, then you're going to have to to pay out the nose for that. And with with asterisk, there is no um, you know imposed limitation, so you, uh, you you really only have to worry about uh, the the bottleneck or the the, uh, the 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 gateway there, I guess, um, to these capabilities is all hardware based. So, um, you know, if, based on whether or not you're recording calls, transcoding those calls, et cetera, and, and uh, might have an impact on the CPU, then you can have uh, an unlimited number of, of participants in a, in, a, in a conference. So, um, likewise, with, with features like voicemail, there's no arbitrary limit on voicemail boxes. It would just depend on how much uh, file system space you have available to write to. Uh, also, very common, uh, use case of Asterix is, is various sizes from like our call center at Digium, what, like six to 10 people up to, to thousands of agents at any given time. So I've seen all of the above, including again, usage of various levels in a, in a carrier installation. So a uh, couple of uh, diagrams of that really quick. It's a traditional PBX and uh, as an IP PBX, Asterix is a perfect drop-in replacement because it doesn't take any special configuration or, or um, you know, uh, add-ons or, or uh, 
you know, something you have to pay for to enable IP capability or any protocols. So all of the legacy connections, again, any, any traditional telecom protocol you can name, Matrix can speak, as well as the, the VoIP protocols that I, I mentioned. And so this is, of course, what you're going to typically see Asterix uh, installed as is a, is a hybrid solution where you've got a number of these, these technologies in use at once. So you know, a multi-site business uh, setup where you can um, terminate calls to your you know, local calls, for example, based on your call routing to uh, your legacy connection, you know, the analog line. And then you can have a, a cheap you know, pay-by-minute uh, account with the, any of the myriad ITSPs to terminate international long distance calls over, over SIP. And, uh, and you, know, you could connect the, your, your sites, you could trunk, uh, directly speaking, for example, the EECS protocol, International Exchange, as I mentioned, that's what it's really designed for and has a lot of great features for that, including a trunking mode that uh, kind of multiplexes the audio uh, on the VoIP connection so that it reduces bandwidth by uh, reducing IP overhead. And, uh, you know, remotely registering various endpoints, SIP clients, uh, soft clients like XLite, Zoiper, et cetera. And so using Asterix as a gateway, as I mentioned, allows you to, um, to get some advanced functionality maybe your legacy PBX would not have. And a lot of the things I'm talking about here can, are really money-saving things and why when people discover Asterix and what it can do, really their, their eyes open because, you know, uh, a lot of those legacy PBX features are just PBX features. No one gets really excited about voicemail. But if, if you can enable a, a, a massive conference server without having to, to pay anything extra for the software, um, obviously there's a great benefit there. And uh, things like using Asterix on the edge uh, so you can enable toll bypass. In this simple example, you've got uh, you know, two sites and with um, basic call routing configured on both of these machines, you can, uh, for example, if, if the you know, server A at the top there is in the uh, West Coast as in LA, and the second server is in New York, um, it, based on the, the routing uh, that you configure in the, the, the New York-based PBX, uh, it will actually route calls over IAX or whatever protocol you want to use from asterisk box to asterisk box, and so that um, the, the, the box in LA will terminate calls using its local connection, um, maybe over an analog line or something, so that you're, you're not paying long distance charges dialing directly to the PSTN on the, uh, the first asterisk box. So things like that are actually um, very easy to configure with asterisk. And then, like I mentioned, just a, a, a hosted or premise-based feature server. If you, uh, I'll use the conference center example again, if you really just want to do that one thing with Asterix, that's very easily done and then you can interconnect that with your legacy PBX, whatever uh, you deem appropriate. Again, uh, there are various types of hardware um, that you can interconnect legacy connections uh, with Asterix, both gateways and native. Um, and call center capability, I want to point out really just that all the, the typical features that are, are um, relative to the back end of a call center. Uh, so the actual ACD, automatic call distribution, queuing and features relative to that uh, that are so important like call recording, uh, uh, barging, like whisper paging so that um, coaches can speak to agents and tell them what to do while they're, they're talking to people. Skills-based routing, uh, multi-queue, uh, dynamic agents, you know, log in, log out, all of those things. Are, are native, you know, two asterisks out of the box. Um, administrative features, as you can, you can probably guess, uh, things like a, a feature-rich GUI for, uh, you know, monitoring calls and, and uh, call logs and things like that are not, you know, part of asterisks. It, it, does, it does create call queue logs, uh, CDR, call detail record, the, the real basic logs for a phone system you know, uh, billable seconds, duration of the call, uh, the who called who, et cetera, all that is there. And that there are a number of um, other businesses in our in a ecosystem that provide, you know, call center specific solutions to that end, you know, uh, providing those very rich and in, in, um, live metrics that call center managers really, uh, really thrive on. <clears throat> okay, so, um,
Asterix can be used uh, not just as a local PBX, but for uh, carrier solution. And, and so what I wanted to point out there is, is not just as a um, uh, enterprise scaled PBX. That's, that's what I'm referring to is um, it can be used for um, features like, uh, and this is, this is uh, apparently very common with Asterisk, um, uh, predictive dialers and uh, calling card applications are huge as well as um, uh, being used in, in uh, carrier solutions for just particular features. Like, like I, I know at one point Vonage, for example, that's a name a lot of people know, uh, we're using Asterix for their voicemail capability. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, who we are as Digium. Uh, Digium is the Asterix company. We're an we're open source company that's uh, made its focus to deliver solutions and uh, services based on Asterisk. Uh, I'll get to, to those uh, in a little bit, but uh, the, the company was founded by Mark Spencer and it was uh, founded out of his dorm room, I believe, when he was a, a student at Auburn University in Alabama. That was uh, for Linux support. And uh, that was, a ver you know, various types of, of support relative to, to Linux. So I think you could, you know, get support for you know, administering or, or bug fixing your LAMP stack or something, or as well as custom, custom development that would wholesale create uh, uh, an application based on people's, you know, requirements. So a lot of different various things, but uh, what happened in brief was that there was a, uh, um, a, a obvious need for that kind of business to have a, a, a real feature-rich phone system. But um, when Mark was pricing things out and, and the, the discovered that the minimal system uh, available at the time, like a short tail system or something, uh, would, would take like almost all of his budget, you know, like leaving $10. So really uh, not an affordable solution. So he decided he would write his own phone system. And uh, th long story short, that's how Asterix came to be. And uh, it was, he w made it open source and you know, hosted on asterisk.org, but really kind of let it, let it be. And uh, I don't think he an, uh, anticipated at all that it would um, be anything that people were interested in. You know, phone systems, just not a very attractive thing. And, uh, but it actually organically uh, gained interest and contribution. So that was a, a, a boon because uh, Linux support services, uh, direct business kind of dried up overnight in late 99 when there's that dot-com uh, bubble burst, you know. And so we, saw this you know, spike in interest in, in Asterisk and decided to switch focus and, and rebrand and become the Asterisk company to, to do those things like I was mentioning, provide uh, uh, technical support, uh, software add-ons, uh, training, and uh, all these Asterisk solutions, including, like that was big at the time, uh, the hardware. So creating T1 termination uh, PCI cards as well as uh, analog cards for, for use with the, the Asterisk box natively. So, <clears throat> um, Asterix, or excuse me, Digium currently, I think, uh, what, 170 ish people now, actually? Um, we're headquartered in Huntsville, Alabama, and we also uh, develop a, a product called Switchvox, which is a, a turnkey PBX um, running Asterix in the background, but uh, very um, specific for SMB PBX specifically with a great GUI, et cetera. Um, that's developed in, in San Diego, California, and then we have a uh, smattering, a handful of people all over the world. As I mentioned, our, our commercial focus is on uh, two things. One of those is uh, the, the, the SwitchFox product, which um, is premise-based as well as hosted, um, a various scale. Um, and the, the, the other stuff is related to uh, Asterix solutions. We call that our our custom communication solutions. And so that includes, uh, well, this is a, a little, uh, I don't know if you can see that very well, but the, the screenshot to the, to the left here is a little screenshot of what's called the switchboard, one of the, the applications that, that makes SwitchVox so great. It's an end user tool that lets you uh, have a customizable uh, sort of a, uh, uh, operator panel that uh, you can add little uh, modules to uh, for things like being able to click to call, drag and drop to transfer calls, uh, logging in and out of queues, all of the, the, um, the, the user land features. And uh, 
again, with the, the custom communication solutions, we have uh, something we're really excited about, uh, and this is new, is uh, uh, our phones, and these are, we call them, you know, asterisk phones, really, and they, th that's not to say that they're, they're not standards-based, they are uh, SIP phones, but what uh, is really cool about the phones is that we have an extra software module that you can install in asterisk, it's called the DPMA, Digium Phone Module for Asterisk. And what this does is allow for uh, capability or interaction with the, uh, the asterisk server that a normal you know, vanilla SIP phone can't do. So th some of the native things that Asterix provides, such as call parking, um, uh, call queue interface, so uh, logging in out of queues, seeing uh, queue stats or uh, uh, times, et or time stamps, et cetera, um, and uh, visual voicemail, another feature. So it just allows for the uh, uh, direct interface with Asterix on, on that level, as well as uh, providing a, a really cool API for uh, creating your own uh, applications in JavaScript. Uh, the, speaking of um, community support, the, all of that is documented uh, on uh, phones.asterix.org. And another site I failed to mention that I think is probably one of the most important ones for reference and, and help was uh, the, the main wiki. That's wiki.asterix.org. I would encourage you to check that out. Uh, very active, updated daily, a uh, number of different articles there that are um, configuration examples, as well as some more dry, uh, sub, um, oops, excuse me, um, uh, settings and options uh, documentation. So uh, those uh, dial plan applications I mentioned, the things that you would use to affect a channel, like dial, what are the arguments for dial? What are the various options I have? Well, there's essentially a man page for that application, excuse me, and all, all the applications in Asterisk, and all of those are documented not just from, you can get them from the CLI, the command line interface for Asterisk, but, but on the wiki, and those are updated automatically. If any changes are made to Asterisk, a bot will push that documentation to the wiki, so it's always up to date and canonical. Uh, as well as the, the, the commands for the various Asterisk APIs, the Asterisk gateway interface and manager interface, those are documented there as well. So that's, that's a great resource, and there's a number of articles there uh, relative to uh, the phone's configuration as well. Um, okay, real quick, just a few other things that we, we, uh, we make and that uh, supports the Asterix installations and that our integrators uh, are providing the solutions, et cetera. Uh, software add-on modules like uh, uh, fax termination for uh, over T38, uh, uh, and uh, G729 codec. That's a license encumbered codec, so to have an add-on module for Asterix to, to use that codec, it's a four-pay license uh, or four-pay module, so um, that's something we provide. And then, uh, of course, uh, Asterix training courses. Yeah. Is a it is, yeah. Now that's for fax termination uh, in or essentially 1.8 Asterisk. Uh, 10 and higher, I believe, uh, that's essentially built in, so. I mean, if you're using the bleeding edge version, which is also LTS version 11, then I think you should be good to go. It's a good question. The question was whether or not uh, fax for asterisk, the, the, the faxing module was for pay as well, and it is. It's a per channel license. One thing to, to consider, though, and this is pretty typical, if, if you're looking at perhaps uh, replacing your existing system with asterisk um, in an SMB environment and you have you know, just one fax machine, you can get a, a single channel of fax for asterisk fully featured uh, for free. So there's a little web form, I think, on, on that page for the Facts for Asterix software add-on and the, the software uh, solutions section of Digium's website. So you can get a license key uh, for that. And uh, there's also one I, I want to mention that's, that's uh, free. If you, if you have any of the, the what's called Dottie hardware, Digium Asterix hardware device interface, it's the name of the driver stack for the kernel modules and tools for the analog and T1 hardware, et cetera. Um, if you have that hardware and you're not using hardware-based echo cancellation, just so on-chip uh, EC instead of letting your CPU do it. And so if you don't have that, uh, you can get uh, an advanced, uh, it's called HPEC, um, High Performance Echo Canceller, and it's normally for pay, but if you already have our hardware, you can request free licenses for that as well, uh, no problem, so um, any number of channels uh, that you want, actually, so. Into the questions kind of about what we do, what we offer, solutions or training, et cetera? Okay. Yeah. Um, 
was just able to yummy install asterisk when I got a living core. Okay, great. Uh, did, and you yum installed it from the, 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 the repo yeah. native to whatever version you're running? Yeah, Fedora. Okay, you're running Fedora what version? 18. Okay, so the gentleman mentioned that he's running Fedora 18 and he didn't uh, have to add the, the, the Digium repo, for example, just yum installed uh, and is on the pretty current version 11.4. Yeah. I got a question. So y'all's business model is hardware and support. Put simply, yeah. Yeah. The, the question was, is our business model basically hardware and support? So it's not selling licenses to software? No, no. It's not selling licenses to software. That's, that's actually a very minimal part of our, our business. We do sell um, channel count. We do sell a lot of licenses for G729, but it's not a revenue uh, generator for us. G729 is license encumbered by the G729 consortium. So when we are selling that license or that software, we're just you know paying that license fee right back to the G729 consortium. So um, no, we really make our revenue off of uh, it's really 50% uh, of the the split between these two product lines. We sell a lot of the turnkey PBX solution Switchbox. That's uh, that's been really great for us and it's really popular now. Um, it's, it's uh, I don't know, in, in a lot of ways I feel like it's unfortunate, but for our business it's great. Um, you know, people uh, are reticent to uh, install um, the, the vanilla open source solution and configure it themselves. They'd rather have a drop-in solution, but we do have a, an answer for that as well, and that's, that's Switchbox, so that's, uh, that's, that's very booming. And so the other 50% is, is the hardware. You know, people who do have an asterisk solution, they're going to install uh, themselves, we can terminate the, the connections um, and uh, provide phones, et cetera, so you have a fully fleshed solution. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, how is your interaction with things like Cisco SPA and SPA? The, the question was, how is the interaction with Cisco uh, SPA, SPA, handsets, et cetera, third party stuff? Uh, the answer is uh, completely compatible. It, that's on a protocol level. So. The Asterix uh, SIP stack is actually um, very, very, um, uh, it, it plays well with others. And so the, 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 on, on Asterix end, it's very, very uncommon to have a compatibility issue. Uh, it's, it, it just speaks SIP and it just works. So that so. module you're talking about for the handsets? The, the add-on module that we're talking about for the handsets, that's a value add specifically relative to the Digium phones. Okay, because we are the Asterix company, and we, you know, we, we created the phones really because there was the, you know, often demand from us to provide complete solutions, including phones. So it's kind of a no-brainer there. But also, since it's a solution relative to Asterix, and there was always there was always this extra step of of custom development for their applications, we provided a way of just making that more native. Okay, with an Asterix focus. So, yeah, it, that's only for the the Digium phones. But I, I have, a, I have a, a number of uh, phones I use for my test bed, and one of them is a Linksys phone that I think is great. Um, uh, and it is totally compatible, like I said. Uh, so I think we're, we're kind of running out of time for the, the talk proper. Any other questions? Because uh, we're going to do, and um, we're going to try for the first time here an Asterix install fest where we've set up a, a, a server um, that's hosting a number of images uh, that you can download and install. Uh, so we've got a, um, a we've got Mac and Linux uh, VirtualBox images that you can install, and then once you have VirtualBox installed, we have vanilla tarballs for asterisk and the the Dotty uh, kernel modules, the drivers for the hardware, uh, and also 64-bit uh, and uh, i686 versions of that asterisk now package I mentioned. So in case anyone wanted to download that ISO to to, to mess around with later, they could do that as well. And the benefit there, I think, is that it also natively includes the, um, the, the free PBX GUI, which is an awesome, awesome, very fully featured um, configuration tool. So it's got a lot of advanced functionality, and, and uh, it's wonderful, but also it allows for um, the, the you know, the SMB or the Soho style administrator to just do ads, moves, and changes. Someone who doesn't really know a phone system uh, can, can easily click to add user extensions without, you know, you know having a 20-year telecom background. 
So, um, let's see. Anyone interested in, in trying to install Asterisk? Okay, you want to stick around? Okay, cool. Um, so, what's the, the server address? Uh, it's 102, but over the wireless, it's not, uh, it's not going to be able to download. So there's, there's no antennas on the. <laughs> Is there not? There's no antennas on the. Oh, you know what? <laughs> so, it's sort of. I can connect to it from up here, but if you want to download from it, you have to get about five feet away from it. <laughs> hey, antennas. Man, I got everything in this bag. My bag of holding. Oh, so uh, when, when he gets the antennas screwed in there and you actually can get some signal, the SSID, it's, it's open and it's, uh, it's called Rusty Loves Derek. <laughs> yes, trolling my buddy there. <laughs> So uh, I guess while, while we're doing that, I, wanna, uh, I can continue real quickly just to show you the, the real basics for how Asterix is configured. Um, all of the, the general configuration files, like if you're configuring a SIP endpoint, for example, the, the syntax is you've got uh, what's, what are called categories. The, the names are in uh, square brackets, that it's a label for that endpoint. So the endpoint will be either an uh, internal resource, a phone, or an external resource, a trunk connection. And the, the, the capabilities for that endpoint are set with just basic key value pairs. And uh, uh, comments are uh, with a semicolon, so uh, not a hash, because we use the, the hash or pound symbol as a, a dialed a DTMF digit, so that would be a conflict. So this is a, like a basic example of all you would need. Actually, you could configure less than this and have a, a functioning SIP endpoint. So if you want to set up your Linksys phone to work with Asterisk, you would uh, set the device name, and specifically by that I mean the, the, uh, the SIP authentication or account name, and the, the, the category name, the, the name in square brackets. And then uh, you would set uh, the, the password as the, the secret at the bottom. So that's important to note that that uh, key is secret and not password. So um, if you're not thinking when you configure it and you set password equals blah, that's not going to get parsed and it will still work just without uh, a password. So, and then it won't match if you do set a password on the endpoint so it'll fail to register. Um, the context setting is the, uh, the point that we start to look for uh, rules that, that, uh, to match against uh, the dialed numbers that you're entering in the phone. So if you dial extension 200, what you, what's actually going to happen? And that occurs in uh, the dial plan, the, the part I mentioned of Asterix that uh, enables extensions and uh, features like voicemail, et cetera. So um, what part of the dial plan do I want to begin looking at? And that's a very important um, you know, linchpin there. The connection between the endpoint and the dial plan is set with the context equals uh, capability or the feature um, or option. So uh, context equals features. It means that there's a, a features category called a context. Um, so that, that the naming is a little bit different, but the, it's going to be another, it's a section in the, the file extensions.conf that, uh, uh, that is a, essentially a container of extensions. So those categories define um, devices in an endpoint configuration for a channel driver like SIP, and they just are feature groups of extensions in uh, the, the native asterisk dial plan. The other settings that we have here are uh, the host setting, so you can specify either with the host name, IP address, or the key or the value dynamic, which means that the endpoint is going to register to you. So you'd have to set your, your SIP endpoint with the server address, and it'll periodically, uh, usually by default, once an hour update and register with that server, letting it know. Um, it would have to authenticate, usually. But once it's authenticated, it just lets the server know its uh, contact info, IP address, and port to use to send it calls. Otherwise, we'd have to set it statically, again, one of two ways, just the, the IP address and the host name. Uh, the third option is the type. Uh, this is a setting that's um, kind of uh, 
ambiguous and, and vague and can be confusing for people who are new to this. And, and it's one of those great things that's changing with the, the new channel driver for SIP. But um, this essentially indicates whether the, the, the options that we're setting for this device are relative to inbound or outgoing calls to asterisk. And so uh, simply put, we set that to friend for endpoints that are phones because that's gonna be um, incoming and outgoing related settings, okay? So outgoing settings like uh, uh, the context, you know, dialing into asterisk, uh, incoming, uh, knowing the host name for the device so asterisk can dial to it. Okay, so. Signal's good now? Okay, so um, if I failed to mention it before, the, 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 the server's address when you connect to that, uh, that network, Rusty Loves Derek, is 192.168.1.102. And so myself, Rusty, and, uh, and Melissa will be kind of wandering around now to, to help you guys get it installed, whatever method you choose. Um, I prefer, uh, just for the, for, the, um, for the sake of, uh, of, of learning or experimenting, we install with uh, the tar balls in here, but I wanted to make sure that you had the ISOs available for the Asterix Now package, uh, you know, definitely for, for later use. Anyone not able to reach the server? Okay. Yeah. When we created Asterisk over a decade ago, we could not have imagined that Asterisk would not only become the most widely adopted open source communication software on the planet, but that it would impact the entire industry in the way that it has. Today, Asterisk has found its way into more than 170 countries and virtually every Fortune 1000 company. The success of Asterisk has enabled a transition of power from the hands of the traditional proprietary phone vendors into the hands of the users and administrators of phone systems. Using this power, our customers have created all sorts of business-changing applications, from small office phone systems to mission-critical call centers to international carrier networks. In fact, there's even an entire country whose communications infrastructure runs on Astros. Digium has always been about creating technology that expands communications capabilities in ways that we could never have imagined. And that's part of what's game-changing about Digium. Today, we're doing it again, this time by introducing a new family of HDIP phones that extends control of the user all the way to the desktop. The launch of these new products represents the next phase in Digium's history of innovation. These are the first and only IP phones designed to fully leverage the power of Asterisk. When we first discussed our expectations for building a family of phones for use with Asterisk, our requirements were pretty simple. We asked the team to build the phones such that they were easy to install, integrate, provision, and use. I think you'll soon agree our engineers have delivered on that goal. User feedback is validating that when it comes to operation with Astro Space systems, including our own SwitchFox based product, these are the easiest to use, best integrated, most interoperable products on the market today. The Digium family of phones will initially include three IP desk phones, uniquely designed to complement any Astro or SwitchFox based solution. These phones are different for a number of reasons. First, they're exclusively designed for use with Astro. Secondly, we've made it really easy to auto-discover and provision the phones. Next, we've made it easy for the phones to access information inside of Asterisk, allowing tight coupling between an application and the phone. Additionally, we've created an applications engine that allows users and developers 
to create and run their own apps on the phone. And finally, we've done all of this at a very compelling price point. At Digium, we're always thinking of ways to give our customers the best value in business phone systems and also give them the power to create their own solutions for any communications challenge. We'll continue to push the boundaries, not only to make Asterisk cooler and faster and more technologically feature rich, but to make Asterisk and VoIP communications even easier. And together, we'll change the way the world communicates. Again. Your customers rely on your website or application. If it's slow or non-responsive, it infuriates your users and costs you money. Keeping your business-critical systems humming along requires insight into what they're doing. Your system metrics tell stories, stories that can reveal performance bottlenecks, resource limitations, and other problems. But how do you keep an eye on all of your system's performance metrics in real time and record this data for later analysis? Enter Longview, the new way to see what's really going on under the hood. The Longview dashboard lets you visualize the status of all your systems, providing you with a bird's eye view of your entire fleet. You can sort by CPU, memory, swap, processes load, and network usage. Click a specific system to access its individual dashboard, then click and drag to zoom in on choke points and get more detail. Comprehensive network data, including inbound and outbound traffic, is available on the Network tab, and Disk Writes and Free Space on the Disks tab, while the Process Explorer displays usage statistics for individual processes. The System Info tab shows listening services, active connections, and available updates. Adding Longview to a system is easy. Just click the button, copy the one-line installation command, then run the command on your Linux system to complete the process. The agent will begin collecting data and sending it to Longview. Then the graphs start rolling. Use Longview to gain visibility into your servers, so when your website or app heats up, it stays up. Most enterprises today realize that usernames and passwords alone aren't enough to keep their network safe from unauthorized intrusions. That's why two-factor authentication has gotten so popular lately. It adds that extra layer of protection enterprise networks need to stay safe. But what you may not know is that some two-factor authentication solutions, they're better than others, like two-factor strong authentication with Wicked. Wicked goes beyond other authentication systems by being less expensive, easier to implement, and easier to use, giving you software-based token clients built to run on all major devices and OSs, including iOS and Android. These tokens utilize a public-private key combination that's generated on device, so there aren't any shared secrets flying around for attackers to hijack, or which require any special handling. Instead, all keys are kept secure and private between the requesting token and your server, which you control in-house, making it the most secure way possible to perform authentication encryption. And with an extensive, flexible API and support for protocols like LDAP and RADIUS, Wicked works with any enterprise network architecture to protect the IT systems vital to your enterprise. Download your Wicked free trial today. Regardless of whether you're considering two-factor authentication for the first time, or just ready to ditch your existing expensive key fob system, we can help with easy-to-implement, easy-to-use, strong authentication. From Wicked. Cloud stacks are everywhere. This is the way to, to better utilize uh, all your resources, and it makes managing all your resources pretty easy. All of the innovation is happening in open source. The, the collaborative nature and of the uh, you know of the community and, and the speed at which these uh, these you know these these deficiencies these bugs are getting discovered and, and fixed is a uh, thing that really shows the power of the you know of the open source community. It is global, and it's definitely because of the users. 
community people are extremely friendly and uh, always ready to help. If you go on to IRC any day, you'll see these guys helping each other out and they're all doing it like in a selfless manner. The product is transparent for everyone. Everyone can look at the code base. Um, everyone can see how Cloud Stack is, is being built. Nothing, nothing is proprietary. Everything is open. In many ways, it's absolutely vital to the, to the ongoing health of Cloud Stack. The most exciting event uh, in recent memory for me uh, was our first developer boot camp. Uh, and you know, our call gave people, I think, maybe two weeks notice to come attend. I was expecting 25 or, or 30 people. Uh, so we ended up with uh, 87 people uh, and had to go get more chairs uh, into the room twice. Everything within cloud computing is commodity and is open source. And so I, I don't think that you will, uh, you'll see anywhere where open source is not pervasive in cloud computing. And so I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's an assumption. I think when you talk about cloud computing, you're really talking about open source cloud computing. CloudStack is a robust solution for large deployments. You have dozens of data centers and thousands of servers in each data center. Is, uh, these um, uh, hardware is going to fail and CloudStack is designed to handle number one that mass scale number two it's designed to handle the failure that inevitably happens uh, in large deployments. We started working on CloudStack over four years ago uh, and you know it was the original set of people working on it uh, had a background of delivering software to telcos and service providers Lots of QA, lots of users actually using it. High availability is the key feature. Uh, multiple hypervisor support, uh, different network models. You can pick up whatever suits you better. Well, stack management server can be deployed in different physical machines. It definitely has a huge footprint. It's being deployed everywhere. There's a major movie studio that uh, um, they were using CloudStack, they were using it to transcode video. And I thought that was terribly fascinating. What I found more fascinating is what they did during lunch, where they would spin up uh, you know, 50 or 60 game servers, and then as soon as lunch was over, they would destroy all the instances and go back to doing real work. CloudStack is vast. Uh, it touches so many different aspects, and there's no one person that's kind of like a master of all those realms. I think CloudStack, as a project is going to be uh, one of the leaders simply because it's some of the most featureful and, and, uh, and robust platforms out there. I don't see any limits with the cloud stack.